Hello, Kurt Jackson here and from KJ Financial in Liberty, Missouri on Retirement Bliss TV. Hey, thanks for checking out this installment of our educational video series, series, series on how Obamacare is going to impact us. If you haven't watched our Obamacare introductory video where we introduce you to Obamacare, it's important you go back and start there. Okay. Then there's three other videos that talk about how Obamacare is likely to impact seniors, individuals, as well as their families. And the third is Obamacare, how Obamacare is going to impact businesses. All three videos are worth a look because you or someone you know is going to be impacted by one or all three. Now, once you've done all of that, then come back to this video where we try to kind of wrap things up. Now, if you'll remember from the previous videos, we feel that the three biggest things Obamacare is going to do is to increase the cost of your health care, increase the cost of your health insurance, and greatly reduce your access to health care. Remember that Disney World example I gave, okay? Do you want to wait for weeks for an appointment? Do you want to wait in the doctor's office all day hoping to get your sick kid or you in to see the doctor? Remember the 30 million more cars on the highway example where it suggested we need to find alternative roads to the major freeways to access health care. Right. That access is why I'm advocating that we need to change how we handle our health care. Access to health care system is going to be different, much different. we got as many as three mil 30 million, it's not three, but 30 million new users, okay? And this is coming into a system that's actually reducing its capacity. So it's meaning it's going to be harder to go through their traditional way of seeing the doctor in their office for the smaller things, like a sinus infection, an ear inf infection, the flu. Those encomp encompass about 70% of all doctor's visits. So instead of waiting to see the doctor, we could maybe utilize a telemedicine plan where you call, email, or video chat with a doctor. They diagnose you and give you a prescription over the phone, email, or video, okay? Um, that you can have a discount card for and go to the pharmacy to get your prescription. These telemedicine lines are typically 24-7, okay? They're open 24-7. So you could do it at night if you want. The doctor's visit's covered by the telemedicine plan and the prescriptions are typically at a set price or you have a discount card for them. Typically, typically much lower than what you would have paid for for your copay to go see the doctor. If you need something bigger, let's say you tore a ligament in your knee. You uh, actually go see the doctor, make sure that that's what you need. Then when they say you need surgery, you don't just go to where they say, okay? Think about it. Surgery is a big expense, right? So if you purchase a car, a house, or some other big ticket item, do you just go buy the first thing you see or do you do some research? Do you comparison shop? Do you look around? That's how I'm seeing healthcare in the future. We shop the service providers in our network to see how much it's going to cost and where I can get it done for the best price and value. This is done through, I, I've seen it where it's going to be done through your insurance company's website, from the comfort of your own home when it's convenient for you to do. Now, this, as, a, as a, a, a part of service of the insurance company, has already, as a part of the service of the insurance company, they've already negotiated with a third party, okay? A third party expert that takes any medical procedure that's more than $1,500 once it's done, and they negotiate the final price down for you, okay? Typically, they see about a 20% reduction in your bill. If you're unable to cover the part of the cost that you're responsible for, then this third party then negotiates on your behalf to set up a payment plan. Historically, these payment plans have had low payments, didn't charge any interest, and as long as you made the payments, there was no negative information on your credit. This is all covered in the insurance plan, okay, that you, you would have. Now, to be clear, all right, it remains to be seen if these types of services will be included in the qualified insurance plans under Obamacare. Okay? What I'm referring to are these supplemental plans that I've been talking about in all these different videos. You can design these to, to cover what you want to cover. All right? Now these are not considered health insurance plans and they would not keep you from having to pay a fine. But they might, I said might, okay, be a better value for you. I realize this doesn't sound right, and I thought the same thing when I was doing my research, but I've seen where a properly structured system of these supplemental plans can actually give better coverage for those 70% of doctor, uh, doctors, doctor office visits, maybe even actually give you cash to cover some, if not all, of all your out-of-pocket costs, and the only issue with them is that if you have a high-dollar medical event, your out-of-pocket costs could end up being a couple thousand dollars more, but... And this is a huge but. The monthly costs, including paying this fine, could be hundreds of dollars less. Plus, you have that third party negotiating your fees down. 
I can envision a picture where that doesn't happen, where you don't have a higher out-of-pocket. Maybe your out-of-pocket's covered through these plans. It just depends, okay? Just like with insurance, it just depends. So if you think about that for a minute, if the cost for this supplemental plan is $300 a month less, in just 10 months you would have saved three grand, right? If your added risk is a couple grand on a major medical issue, haven't you potentially already come out ahead? I mean, how many major medical issues does a family typically have in a year or even in their lifetime? Okay. Now remember though, this is with this different system, you're getting the services cheaper, right? Because you shopped for them. You have a third party negotiating your bill down, typically around 20%. Your supplemental policies are giving you cash to help you pay for things. Even things that are not directly related to your medical bills. Maybe you have a house payment, a car payment, care for your kids, all right? If you can't scratch a check for the final bill, they're gonna negotiate a payment plan that you can swing, okay? And they're gonna do that for you. You don't have to do that. Here's an example of what I found. A supplemental plan with a significantly lower monthly premium contracted with Walgreens, okay? So that doctor's visit for a sinus infection, ear infection, whatever, you go to the nurse practitioner at Walgreens. The contracted price is $65 but your plan reimburses you 75 bucks. The prescription negotiated with Walgreens is 10 bucks. Your plan reimburses you 15. You actually came out ahead 15 bucks. Now, please understand, this is maybe an extreme example, and it doesn't happen every time, but when was the last time you went to the doctor and got money, okay? This is a, just a sample of what my research uncovered, and I'm continuing to do research to find more and more ways to benefit my clients, okay? So while it might make sense to make health insurance to get health insurance through the exchanges, and if you qualify for the subsidies. Assuming you can still afford the premiums, right? Or it might make sense to look at a properly structured system of supplemental coverage, even if you have to pay the fine, okay? Or it might even make sense to have a combination of both ways. My, the point here is you should at least know your options, okay? What they cover, what they cost, what they don't cover. I realize when I say a business that is offering group health insurance shouldn't offer it is an extreme position to take. But remember, I analyze systems and what I found is a way to benefit both the employer and the employee by going a different route. The employer can better control their costs, reduce their risk, and give the employee something better. The employee can get the coverage that they want, to, want that they want to have in the way they want to have it and at the lowest possible cost to them. Now wait a minute. Don't confuse with what I'm saying as the costs are low. They're not, okay? We're likely to see greatly increased costs across the board. I'm just saying that what I'm talking about keeps their costs lower than what they would have been if they didn't know how to work the system, okay? Now, believe it or not, I do think there could be some good that comes out of this, okay? But you're going to have to be more proactive about it to find the good. Here's an example of, of what I'm talking about. I heard about a guy in Chicago that needed a knee replacement, okay? He didn't have insurance. I know that's an extreme example. So he was going to have to foot the bill for it. Well, that's a big expense. So what did he do? It was 60 grand in Chicago, okay? But he shopped, and he found an, a, a hospital in Oklahoma City that worked like hotels on Priceline does to fill their unfilled rooms. And he found an opening in their surgery schedule and did it for 15 grand, okay? Now, realize this guy was paying for everything out of his pocket because he didn't have insurance, so he had a huge incentive to reduce the cost. All I'm saying is that's what you're going to need to do. With the help of people like me and the companies that we work with, you'll need to find ways to cut your costs. Okay? And when you do this, you're finding those side roads to get better access to the system. I hope that makes sense. So if you could greatly reduce the cost of care you need, then you're reducing, if not eliminating, your out-of-pocket costs, right? If you were buying a big ticket item, would you just buy it from the first place you went to, or would you do some research and shop around? That's what I'm saying we need to do with healthcare going forward. We need to access it differently for the minor things. Maybe it's telemedicine, or maybe it's going to the nurse practitioner at Walgreens with a, with a plan that gives you guaranteed costs, okay? Now, for the seniors, I pretty much covered your options in your video. Unfortunately, they're more cut and dry, okay? I guess what I want you to take from all this is that we can still find ways to help you out. I know those ways are going to cost you more money. More money you likely feel you don't have. But knowing the system, the systems the way that I do, I would say with a pretty high level of confidence that if that you've got income that you didn't know you had. Okay? And I can help you find it. 
The problem with all that I've told you here is that it's highly likely you're going to need someone with a lot of experience with Obamacare and the systems, okay, to help you navigate it. Right. Hmm, now if only you knew someone that could help you do just that. Hmm, if only, if only. All right, that was a bit obvious, wasn't it? I apologize for that. You do know of someone, me, okay? So if you'd like to explore how to best navigate the system of healthcare and find out what other systems I've learned to navigate, hint, hint, things like the tax system, the social security system, the Medicare system, the retirement income system, the paying for college system. They're just a few of the systems that I've been able to crack. If you'd like to know how cracking those systems could help you, then either call me at the number on the screen or email me at the, at the information on the screen. Look, I promise to make things as painless as possible. There's not any hard selling on my part. I share with you how I can help you, and you decide if that's the kind of help you want. Fair enough? All right. All right, well, great. Well, hey, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to check out this series, our video series on Obamacare. If you found value in the series, but only if you found value in the series, please share the link to our Retirement Bliss TV with your friends and your family. Because don't they deserve to have this information? Also take time to check out our ever-growing library of educational videos we aim to educate you about your money. Okay, That's what we're talking about, your money, how to better keep your money and grow your money, save your money, all of those things. And that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to accomplish with our videos. If you've got a topic you'd like to see covered, shoot it to me and I'll put it on the list. So until we talk again, okay, I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. Thanks again for tuning into our series and I hope you enjoyed and benefited from the, from the information we shared. Thanks.